The Chicago White Sox announced their initial 2023 promotional schedule. Uh, some long-standing favorites and a few new items to look forward to this season. Also, earlier this week, the White Sox announced their 2023 coaching staff. Uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, and it's still so weird to say Jose Abreu is officially a Houston Astro. You are Locked On White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just search Locked On White Sox. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk off-season White Sox. Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, the start of the 2023 Sox season is four months away, but there are some dates you can already circle on your calendar. Jose Abreu is ready to win, and the Houston Astros will give him that opportunity. And the Pedro Grafol coaching staff looks to be finally uh, in place. Uh, first off, hey, I just want to thank, uh, again, Javier Reyes of Lockdown Padres and Brandon Snide of Lockdown Brewers for uh, providing their expertise on guys like Mike Clevenger and Colton Wong. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed their perspectives uh, as much as I did. Uh, the more I hear about Colton Wong, uh, the more I want him uh, in a White Sox uh, uniform. Uh, Chicago White Sox 2023 coaching staff was announced earlier this week. Uh, we knew about pitching coach uh, Ethan Katz. He was staying uh, bullpen coach uh, Kurt Hassler, uh, he's going to stay. And we've heard about a uh, bench coach, Charlie Montoya. But uh, some of the other names, uh, they've popped up, but we didn't know exactly what role they would have on the uh, White Sox staff in 2023. Well, that has been announced. And uh, Mike Tosar, we talked about him. Uh, well, he's going to be the major league field coordinator. Uh, but according to Grafol, uh, he's going to do some of the hitting as well. Uh, Tosar, 54 years old, spent the last three seasons as a special assignment hitting coach in the Kansas City Royals uh, organization. Uh, Grafol said Tosar brings a lot of value to the bunting game. Uh, he's got a lot of value to base running. Certainly, he's got a lot of value to hitting and infield. Uh, Jose Castro, uh, who spent the last eight seasons with the Atlanta Braves, uh, he is the team's new hitting coach. Uh, Castro, 64 years old, spent 2015 uh, through 2022 as the Braves' assistant hitting coach. Previously, he was a quality assurance coach for the Chicago Cubs in 2014 and the Seattle Mariners interim hitting coach in 2008. Uh, I believe he's one of the best in-game hitting coaches around, uh, Grafol said. He's got tremendous instincts. Uh, he's been in the leagues uh, for a long time. Uh, the Sox promoted Chris Johnson. We talked about him on this podcast uh, recently, uh, you, Chris Johnson from AAA Charlotte. He's going to be the new assistant hitting coach. Uh, during Johnson's two years with the Knights, they ranked fifth in the International League in home runs with 350 and sixth in slugging percentage of 422. I was really impressed by his knowledge and analytics, the terminology he uses, Grafol said of Chris Johnson, who is 38. Uh, I think those two, along with Tosar, uh, who was part of that hitting program down in Kansas City, 
are going to make a great team when it comes to communication with the players, uh, being able to make adjustments and adapt to every single player, every culture, and also adapt to any type of analytics or sports sciences that's thrown our way as well. Uh, Eddie Rodriguez, a new name there. Uh, he will take over as the third base coach while Daryl Boston returns as the first base coach. Rodriguez, 63 years old, also comes from the Royals system like Tosar and Grafol. Uh, he spent the last three seasons as their minor league field coordinator. Uh, his pitching, uh, his coaching experience, I should say, includes serving as the Royals third base coach 2011 uh, through 2013, Mariners first base coach in 2008, Montreal Expos Washington Nationals bench coach uh, for a few years in the mid-2000s, Arizona Diamondbacks third base coach early 2000s, uh, and first base coach uh, in, in the Toronto Blue Jays system, uh, also the third base coach with the Jays in 1998. Uh, he's done a lot of things in this game, Grafol said, He's got short-term memory, which is extremely important at that position. He's aggressive, and he's extremely uh, detailed. Rodriguez will lead the infield, uh, Grafol said, with Tosar and Montoya helping. Uh, Daryl Boston, 59 years old, will handle the outfield uh, with Montoya leading the base running. Grafol said of Boston, uh, who will be in his 11th season, folks, as first base coach for the White Sox in 26 as a Sox coach. Uh, Grafol said uh, he has great relationships with the players. I, I should hope so. He's been around long enough uh, and is detailed. huh? Uh, Jeff Head, uh, here's a new name, uh, is the Senior Director of Sports Performance. Uh, Head, 37 years old, was the Senior Director of Health and Performance with the Cincinnati Reds for three seasons. Uh, 2020 through 2022. He previously spent 12 seasons in the San Francisco Giants organization. It's a completely new position, Rick Hahn said. Uh, that's going to help coordinate not only our strength and conditioning coaches and what they do at the big league level, but throughout our minor, le minor league system, uh, make sure our entire chain of strength and conditioning coaches are doing the same thing. Uh, but also Jeff will be involved with everything from nutrition to sleep to sports science, working in the lab, uh, working with our technicians, making sure we have the best information for what our players need and what we can do to keep them on the field. Uh, much like the Chicago White Sox, the Cincinnati Reds uh, could not stay healthy last year. I reached out to Jeff Carr, uh, who is the a Locked On Reds host, uh, to get his input on Jeff Head. And this is what he had to say. The number of players on the IL was staggering last year. Uh, and we have always seemed to go get guys who are injured, who then re-injure themselves shortly after returning. The Reds, almost immediately after the season ended, made a change in their training staff. Uh, so, Maybe the change of scenery will be good for Jeff Head because the Sox desperately need a change of direction that will hopefully produce a change in results. Uh, despite all of the changes to the coaching staff, Daryl Boston remains the first base coach. Uh, it sounds like he will be taking on some different roles, uh, which I think is a good thing because being in charge of base running is not something Boston should take on in 2023. Uh, I know it's just first base coach. But that's the point. If it's regarded as just a first base coach, then why not let Pedro Grifol hire a completely new first base coach? Stick with the theme of change. Uh, Boston has been the first base coach since 2013. That was during the Ventura era. Uh, maybe Pedro Grifol just could not live without Daryl Boston. Maybe Daryl Boston is secretly regarded as one of the best first base coaches in all of MLB. I think what really happened is that Boston was completely forced upon Grifol due to some sort of Kenny Williams, Jerry Reinsdorf situation. Uh, and hopefully at the end of the day, it's the last thing we need to worry about. Uh, I like Castro. I like Chris Johnson. I'm happy Grafol was able to bring over some familiar faces from Kansas City. Uh, it was one thing to hear that Jose Abreu signed with the Astros, but it was a whole other thing to actually see him 
and a Houston jersey at the recent press conference. I'm going to tell you why Abreu needed to move on. Uh, more on that uh, in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Jose Abreu was formally introduced by the Houston Astros. I'm sure all of you saw this uh, uh, earlier this week. It happened. Uh, it was a bizarre situation seeing him in a Houston Astros jersey. Uh, Lots of comments by the White Sox organization and by Abreu himself to break apart here. Uh, Here were Jerry Reinsdorf's comments if you didn't get a chance to uh, see these. This is what Reinsdorf uh, had to say. Uh, Jose Abreu deservedly belongs among the roster of White Sox franchise all-time greats. His determination and commitment to the game each and every day made him the consummate professional, always leading by example. It was my fervent hope that Jose would never wear another uniform. As I told him many times throughout the years, unfortunately, hope is not always translated into reality. Uh, While we ended up in different places in the business side of the game, Jose and I always shared the same love of baseball. I am grateful to Jose for his friendship and the impact he made for the White Sox franchise, both on the field and in the community. I want to thank him for always representing the values of the White Sox organization in the great city of Chicago. Strength, hard work, pride, and tenacity. His legacy is written in the White Sox record books forever. Uh, Hope, hope, hope. Uh, Rick Hahn on uh, Jose Abreu. This is what he had to say. Obviously, it's always a difficult day from an emotional stand, standpoint, uh, from a fan standpoint, when you see a franchise icon don another uniform. It's a day that nobody ever envisioned seeing, but the realities of the business side sometimes dictate that such things happen. I don't want to talk about negotiations or offers. We only talk about deals that happen. Objectively, it makes sense for two organizations, given their needs and fits, who's available on the roster to value, to make contract offers that are different. I've seen enough of this over the years to know it was intellectually possible, but I also understand it's the fans' standpoint in me. It's a shock to the system. It's lousy, and it makes all the sense in the world objectively, but you feel that. I'd be in the wrong line of work if I didn't feel that. Uh, this uh, this was Rick Hahn talking about the Sox moving forward. Obje- objectively, you can look at the roster and feel like this obviously makes sense to have Andrew Vaughn installed at first and Gavin Sheets perhaps uh, get some opportunities there or occasionally perhaps Yasmani Grandal. But it doesn't remove the emotional side of it, which we're all dealing with for a portion of the day. Then we resume work trying to improve this roster with a feeling like first base is not an area of need given Andrew's presence. Uh, And this is what the man himself, Jose Abreu, had to say during uh, that Houston Astros press conference. Uh, Abreu said, yes, the White Sox made me an offer, not a formal one, but yes, an offer was made. And well, that is that only God knows why he does what he does. Abreu also said it was a really good offer, but we'll leave it at that. Uh, And Abreu on signing with the Houston Astros, I just want to be part of a great family and I want to win. Uh, I don't think that Abreu was saying the White Sox were a bad family necessarily. I think he has a, a lot of love for the White Sox and considered them a family. A family he maybe thought he'd be uh, with for the you know entirety of his career. Uh, but something changed since his last contract in 2019. I think he just needed to get away from his White Sox family. Uh, it's been too much, or maybe 
not enough has been done, and he truly wants to win. Houston is ready to repeat as champs, and I think they will continue uh, to throw money at the problems, unlike the Sox. However, if Jose Abreu was offered some money, then there is some money to spend uh, by the White Sox. So we'll see what happens uh, as these uh, winter meetings get underway very soon. Uh, Speaking of throwing money around, hey, bobbleheads, hockey jerseys, uh, and the Hawaiian shirt is back. I'm going to tell you what you can start looking forward to uh, in the 2023 season. Uh, More on that in a moment. The 2023 Chicago White Sox promotional schedule, uh, the initial one, I should say, is out. Uh, Some uh, great visuals. I'm going to explain some of these that they're uh, announcing, but you got to see some of the pictures yourself. Uh, You know me, I'm a huge uh, I'm a huge bobblehead guy. Uh, That's my main area of focus when this promo schedule comes out. Uh, As of right now, there are only two bobblehead giveaways that were announced. May 13th, there's an Aloy Jimenez, a Hi Mom Talking bobblehead, and uh, July 8th, a Luis Robert bobblehead. Uh, Both Jimenez and Robert were featured on a dual bobblehead in 2021. Uh, This will be Aloy's second uh, standalone bobblehead. Uh, This will be Robert's first a solo bobblehead. Uh, Sox had five bobblehead giveaways last year. So I'm assuming there will be more announced as the months roll on. Maybe a Dylan Cease or an Andrew Vaughn. Uh, that would be nice. How about in honor of the 30th anniversary of his Cy Young Award, uh, we get a Black Jack McDowell bobblehead. How about that? Uh, other announced giveaways, uh, April 13th. Uh, Speaking of that 1993 uh, anniversary, a 1993 AL West Champs crew neck sweatshirt. That's on April 13th. April 29th, uh, you've got the uh, hockey jersey returns. This time it's got the 83 logo on it. Looks really sharp. Uh, June 3rd, there is a bucket hat. Uh, June 10th, the Hawaiian shirt comes back. That one is looking nice as well. Uh, June 24th, a basketball jersey. Uh, August 12th, this is, I think, the first time they're giving away a football jersey. Uh, September 2nd, the soccer jersey is back. And September 16th, halfway to St. Patrick's Day, uh, they've got an Irish jersey. Uh, Fireworks and family Sundays are back. No word on hot, Hot Dog Wednesdays or Dog Day. Again, this was just the initial schedule. I'm sure more events will pop up. Hey, thank you so much uh, for making this podcast part of your daily routine. Uh, You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcasts. And uh, on our YouTube channel, just search Lockdown White Sox. We are on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. Uh, You can find me on Twitter at uh, Nick underscore GG TB. I also want to quickly mention uh, there was a Chicago Tribune article that dropped Uh, Thursday morning digitally. It'll be available in print, I believe, in the Sunday's edition by Shakia uh, Taylor. Uh, Really appreciate her including me in in this profile they did on Chicago baseball fans. So if you haven't found it, uh, check it out uh, on Chicago Tribune website. It should be in the print version in Sunday's uh, paper this coming Sunday, uh, December 4th. Uh, Thank you so much for making Locked On White Sacks your first listen. Uh, For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, uh, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up on the next episode, I'll continue to take a look at off-season scenarios for the Chicago White Sox as the Pedro Grafol era moves full steam ahead and the winter meetings begin Really appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox.